Hi everyone and welcome. Today we'll talk about ELF file format. That standard binary format for Linux and Unix-like systems on x86 processors. It's associated with the following file name extensions. So if a file doesn't have any file name extension, then we're going to think about ELF format. And also we have bin, o, so, elf, prx, and many more. And that's the layout of the elf format. By now, you should be already familiar with this concept over here. If you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. I'm going to drop a link for you so you can watch the previous classes. The ELF header can be 52 or 64 bytes long, depending on the platform. It also contains the magic and the class. When the class is 1, the platform is 32 bits. When the class is 2, the platform is 64 bits. It also defines the little endian or big endian encoding, the version, and it contains information about the application binary interface which is going to tell you the machine and the file type which can be core for core file, DIN for shared object, exec for executable files or rel for files before being linked to executable. The ELF header also contains the entry point from where the process starts and much more. Program header table. Array of structures describing how to map the file into virtual address space for runtime execution so that different parts of the program can be loaded into different memory locations. Section Error Table Array of structures that contain metadata about a given section. Executable files need raw data, BSS, data and text. ELF executable files consist of an ELF header, a program header and section header or both of them. And now let's have a look at some practical examples. I created a small C program that we are going to analyze using our hexadecimal viewer. We are going to grab the very first 64 octets because we know that on 64 bit machine, the ELF header is exactly 64 octets. And that's the name of the program. So that's the beginning of the header. And then this one is telling you that that's a 64 bits machine, little endian encoding, elf version 1. This is always 1 because at the moment there is just one version of elf, right? These are always 0 and those are left at 0 for future development. Now I'm not going to explain all of this but just keep in mind that this one is the entry point of your program now it's not exactly 710 it's actually 1070 because remember little endian so you need to swap if you want to double check your findings about the entry point what you need to do is looking for the symbol table of the application where all your functions are defined and you need to find this one the underscore start don't look for the main because the main is actually bootstrapped by the start 
and as you can see we have 1070 which seems correct because as I said before this one has to be swapped because we are talking about little Indian. And finally, we can have Red Elf printing out the Elf header in a more readable way. And that's the entry point address with a bunch of information. That's 64, and then we know that that's a shell object file, which is an executable, and that it's a Intel 64 machine and so on and finally let's have a look at the program header which tells us how to load all parts of the program into memory so red f l program okay so you know that the code of the program is contained into this section over here, dot text. So dot text is 0, 3. We start from 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3. And in fact, we should be able to read this section and execute it, but we should not be able to write it, right? Let's have a look what happens to, for example, the data section, which is 5, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's readable and writable as expected, right? and so on. So, I hope you've enjoyed my class. Please like, share, subscribe and visit my website if you like and subscribe for the newsletter. So, thank you very much.